Hey everybody, this is Huang and this is my champion recap for the Top Cut event, which was 256 man with 8 rounds. We're going to go over what I played against and we're also going to go over my deck list, some choices, what I would have changed, etc. Like, like the whole shebang, right? But to give a little context, I am... I, I'd like to believe, right, that I am the best Rookie Rush player in all of North America. Um, I had a hand in a lot of the lists that came to fruition. For example, Steven's list that he topped with a lot in 1.0, uh, that list came from me. The list that was also featured in Steven's video for his 1.5 decks, uh, that was also courtesy of me, right? So I've won multiple events, or topped multiple events with Rookie Rush, and this is by far my biggest event that I have now won. So I'm going to do a little bit of a recap, and instead of like the normal uh, format where I'm using like the... The, the file where I, like it shows it clearly. Uh, I'm gonna use the image that I used for the camera instead because I, you know, I just wanted to flex a little bit, flex the uh, alt arts and whatnot, right? And I just wanted to show off real quick because you know, it's pretty neat, I think. I actually got a custom mat, right? I don't know, oh, it's upside down. But I actually got a custom mat for, for the channel. Where, where are we? Yeah. So I got that done, but Without further ado, let's get into what you've all been waiting for, right, is the deck itself. So, starting us off, we have our Digitama choices. We play the 4 Upamon and then the 1 Demi Vmon. And the reason why we play 5 Digitamas instead of the average 4 that you commonly see in Rookie Rush is because of Shine Greymon. If Shine Greymon grinds you out towards the late game, you need the 5th Digi Egg to keep pushing in pressure. Um, so because Shine Greymon is such a dominant force within the meta, we do have to run the 5th Egg. It's not like it's that bad, right? Like, it doesn't matter too much. In the grand scheme of things, I play four Gabumon because Gabumon is a draw in which, you know, we don't draw that much in this deck. Four Gomamon, four Lekmon because your two cross vanillas are insane value. Four Vmon, jamming Vmon was by far the MVP. Every game that I opened this card, I immediately did evolve into it, wasn't even, didn't hesitate. Card is insane. Um, really good with jamming, really good synergy with the X Vmon and whatnot. Card's just great. Uh, we played two Penguinmon. We didn't play more than two Penguinmon because the one cost evolution is kind of a hindrance. Um, but we do want to include some kind of Penguinmon because A, 5k body is huge. Especially versus, uh, not versus, but with XVmon, right? Because XVmon can restand the 5k. Um, but also it dodges Volcan Dramon. And Volcanic Dramon is a really, really big thing in this format, in my opinion, that not a lot of people are doing. Um, so we're doing it just in case. We play the 4 Araramon, which is the 5k 2 drop that Green got. It's insane. This card is absolutely broken. Bonkers, really. Um, yeah, card's great. It's literally a 2 drop that caught. It's, it's 5k. It's, it's insane. Um, albeit, ironically, it died a lot to security today, which I thought was really funny. And we play 4 Mushrooms because Mushroom is the second best rookie in green since we're not digivolving. So since it has the second best stat line in green, we play that. We play 4 XVmon. XVmon is the bread and butter of this deck. It makes everything uh, gel together. It's really, really good in tangent with some of the cards that we'll go over. Um, but this card enables you to sneak in an extra attack, and it also cycles you one. Really good card. We play the 4 Gorimon. Gorimon it was basically, it's there to trade with blockers because it's 6k, so you trade blocker for uh, blocker for Gory, which is a really good trade on your end, right? Whenever your opponent trades blocker away for Gory, you're like, you're really, really happy. Like, it's such a good trade. Now, not only that, but in the mirror matchup, you can op commonly uh, restand Gorilla with XVmon. So that's also a huge value. It came up a lot today. And then we, uh, it's also just a really good way to cycle. We play three Puppetmon, not four, but three. Uh, and the reason why we only play three Puppetmon rather than the average four is because Shaco, oh, not Shaco, um, red and yellow are really big this format. And if you give them over too much memory, then you either open yourself up to become uh, susceptible to Alter S or susceptible to Shine Draymon. Um, I didn't want to deal with either of those situations, so we only played three, so I wouldn't constantly see it. I saw it just enough to where it came up, obviously, right? Um, so I think three is a pretty good ratio. Obviously, you can play four depending on your meta, but I think three is a nice sweet spot. We play four Vulcan Hammer. Vulcan Hammer is absolutely bonkers in this deck. It enables you to do uh, stop fighting plus XVmon if you have your Tamer set up. It enables you to cheat out an extra rookie. It enables you to uh, choke your opponent. Absolutely insane card. Like, phenomenal. Um... We play two stop fighting. Stop fighting is a really, really good addition to Rookie Rush coming from the 1.5 box. Uh, what it does, it allows you to swing your rookies without fear of them dying or losing a blocker, and then you can immediately uh, digivolve or use Positron or etc. Or even Puppet Mon, right? Um, there's a lot of things you can do to, in combination to stop fighting, but the most important thing is that it adds pressure 
to your board because now your opponent has to deal with all these bodies that now survive the fight. Um, we played two flower cannon. Flower cannon was really good this um, this tournament. It not only does it rest blockers, which specifically for this tournament it didn't matter because we were playing a lot of mirrors, so they didn't have blockers. But more importantly, its security effect was insane because whenever we hit the flower cannon against rookie rush, it's so much value. Two positron laser. There is a misconception about Positron Laser that a lot of people have. Positron Laser, um, to some people, they think of it as a form of removal or like a pseudo flower cannon, right? Um, because it prevents blocking or attacking. Um, the actual reason you play Positron, there's two big reasons. So one is if you use it after Let's Stop Fighting, your opponent can't swing into your bodies, which means you get those bodies to swing with again next turn, and that's insane pressure. Like, easy, easy, like super insane pressure. It also acts as a uh, really good security check. If you reveal this in security with a blue Digimon on your board, it's a Kokaitis Breath. It's a Kokaitis Breath and two Forbidden Temptations. Insane value. Absolutely bonkers. I know you played three Davis. I know a lot of people play two Davis, but I felt three was actually really, really good. Uh, mostly because of how many of your plays hinge off of the three threshold, uh, right? So you guarantee XV on, you guarantee stop fighting, you guarantee flower can, you guarantee a lot of your cards. Um, and if you have Vulcan Hammer, then you can go uh, stop fighting plus XV on, right? That's, that's an insane combo. So much tempo. Not only that, but he's really, really good as uh, you do lack draw power in Rookie Rush. Davis is oftentimes at least you're going to get one off the top. So most, a lot of times you're also going to find two, right? Because we have four Aurora, four Mushroom, and then three Puppets. And then not only that, but against Red, this came up a lot where I would drop a Davis after getting board wiped and he would immediately replenish my hand so that I can just keep funding my place. Because uh, usually what happens is that after you get board wiped, then you're out of gas and you just you no longer have any plays to go with but with davis you potentially just refill the tank super strong card so overall i think this list is arguably the best list you can get out of rookie rush in 1.5 um after extensive testing i've tested rookie rush since japan right since japanese uh, 1.5 since japanese 1.0 i've been i've been messing with this archetype for a really long time i think rookie rush is really really healthy for the game because it is a cheap budget aggro deck uh, similar to Mono Red Aggro and Magic, right? This deck is really, really good at punishing slow and control decks, uh, combo decks, right? Uh, because you just go so fast and you just say, hey, you know, I'm not going to give you that breathing room, I'm not going to give you that pressure, right? I think that is really healthy for the game. Because otherwise, then decks just, you know, they just go tall and they just, they just do whatever they want, right? They just pop off with their combos. And I think that's not very interesting. I think it's much more interesting when you have something like this or something like Megazoo that's unorthodox and it really brings a new factor to the table. So I totally expect people to either start picking up Rookie Rush in the future, right? Especially after um, this tournament and how many Rookie Rush players there were overall. Um, but also I expect a lot of anti-Rookie Rush techs. I was considering running Shockomon actually for instead of um, one of the gorillas, but I actually don't own Shockomon. Um, if I had brought Shockomon for the mirror matchup, I think it would have come up a lot, right? I faced three Rookie Rush uh, players and two Imperials. And Imperial Ultramon is essentially Rookie Rush, but with, like, with extra steps to it. Uh, so I think Shockomon actually would have come up a lot, but we didn't have it, unfortunately. But either way, this, this list was just peachy perfect. It was, it was such a good list. Um, so there, there's a lot of things I want to talk about in Rookie Rush, right? Um, and I haven't talked about it a lot. And the reason why is because I was trying to hide this list. Or I was just trying to hide my um, my my sauce. I was trying to hide my secrets because I didn't I didn't want anyone else to um, get ahead of me. Um, so I so I, I held this in, and now that the tournament's over, now that we've won, I, you know, I'm finally exposing it to the world. So now that uh, your locals can now be terrorized by rookie rush. Uh, sorry about that, right? But so rookie rush has two psychological uh, elements that a lot of people don't realize. Um, the first psychological element that rookie rush presents is when you are being rushed down by rookie rush you as the opponent feel very inclined to rush them back because you're like oh you know if i if i don't keep up pressure with rookie rush then i'm just gonna get blown out right um and that is why rookie rush plays so many uh, what i refer to as security bombs right having so many security bombs means that when your opponent uh when they rush to try to hit you back then they're very likely to hit something in the security that would just immediately swing the tempo in the game um if we include the puppet mod uh, four Vulcan Hammer, two Positron, two Flower, three Davis, right? So off of Tamers and Options alone, that's uh, 11 cards and a three Puppet. That is 14 cards that if we see it in security, it's probably going to blow the opponent out, right? So that's super, super insane, especially um, when it comes down to like the mathematics of whatnot about it. Um, the second psychological effect, right, is in a best of three format, when a player loses to Rookie Rush, they will get tilted. Or, or at the very least, they will feel something, right? Because if you lose to like Omnimon or you lose to Green or Shine, you're like, okay, it's whatever, right? 
But when a player loses to Rookie Rush, the average player gets upset about it because they're like, oh man, I feel like I got cheesed out. And so as a result, they make mistakes. What deck capitalizes on mistakes? Rookie Rush. Rookie Rush absolutely capitalizes on those mistakes. If your opponent slips up because they're tilted, bang, immediately you capitalize on that, right? So overall, I think this Rookie Rush list is really, really good. Um, I just, we're going to go over like a recap now. So round one, Omnimon Red, it was 2-0 in my favor. My opponent Alterest me and Vulcandrum on me in the same game, by the way. Um, but we used Double Davis to stabilize and get ourselves back in the game. So it's super good. Um, round two, Imperial Drum on blue. We went 2-1, and it was really, really close. But luckily, we were able to cinch it out through Puppetmon, and we were able to stun his board. Um, round three, Imperial Drum on blue once again. And this one was not as close. We were able to blow our opponent out. He didn't draw into his XV Mon for lethal in game two. So that was really, really good for us. Uh, round four was Rookie Rush. And round five was Rookie Rush. And round six was Rookie Rush, right? Um, so we played a lot of, we played a lot of essentially mirrors, right? Because I, I consider Imperial Dramon what is basically um, Rookie Rush with extra steps. And the reason, the key to winning the mirror is you never give your opponent the opportunity to breathe. You never give them the opportunity to put you in a position of lethal, right? So I was constantly, uh, not only was I obviously swinging at their security, but I was trading at their rookies that survived. I was using Gorillamon. Gorillamon, like, very unlikely uh, was to die to their security, right? And so I optimized for that. Not only that, but I feel my security is much more equipped and better prepared than my opponents. Oftentimes, I would, uh, knowing how many cards were left in my deck or knowing what I had left in security, right, based on, like, what we've gone through in the game, I was able to factor in, oh, do I need to push for game here? Oh, do I need to stall the game out here? Do I lose the Vulcan here, right? I was taking all of this into account. And I was using that in order to make my security uh, much more stronger, right? Uh, so for example, like, oh, my only out in this situation is like a hammer spark or it's a flower cannon. I ha so I, I play toward that out, right? Uh, which is a really simple concept um, when you say it out loud, but a lot of people don't realize this and they won't play for their outs. They'll instead like just play like regularly, um, even if that's not the correct play. So I think knowing what limitations you have in the mirror matchup or just mirrors in general, right? Because oftentimes it comes down to a bit of a luck factor who draws a little bit better. Um, and so you want to get those slight edges in the, the mirror matchups to where um, it, it swings it even like 5% in your favor. right? And that's why I wanted to run Shakoban because I did anticipate a lot of mirrors. We didn't have it again. And then round 7 was Shine Greymon. Um, Shine Greymon is a 50-50 matchup if, they, if you don't open super well. But I just... Open the nuts. I blew, I opened Vmon plus uh, Aurora Mon, which is an insane opener. Um, and I just I just went to start chipping at his security. It didn't matter how many tamers he set up because our Penguin Mon and Aurora Mon are five k. Um, and being five k means it takes two Shine Greymon procs, which means he was really uh, he wasn't able to efficiently clear out my board. So that was really really good. And so we two owed uh, Shine Greymon, and then round eight was against Omnimon Red. He had the Alteress. Uh, we lost game one because I opened four hammer sparks was super unlucky so after I got all to rest I wasn't able to recover um, game two was a bit closer uh, I believe if I remember correctly I actually used uh, puppet mon to lock his board down and I went off from there and then game three it got really close to the wire but he didn't have the all to rest he instead went for OG Omnimon and because of that my board was really good but even if he did go for the all to rest uh, I had gorilla mon and I hard slammed the Gorilla Mon, and I was like, okay, he can't make another Omnimon off of that six I just gave him. And if he goes into Alter S, then he loses the game because Gorilla Mon plus my raising area will swing for lethal. Um, but if he goes for Tall Omnimon, then my the board left over plus my raising will go for lethal. So I basically checkmated my opponent, um, all thanks to Gorilla Mon, right? Because Gorilla Mon gives us that out to Alter S. So. Um, that is my tournament recap. I think this deck is totally fine as it is. I think it's really, really uh, efficient. Uh, huge shout outs to a bunch of my friends, uh, Gage, uh, Gage Swift, uh, Tessero, and um, people like uh, Karan Patel, uh, Nomen, uh, Karar, like just a, a bunch of you guys, especially um, D Lair, right? That, that's the locals I go to. Um, you guys have been like really, really hospitable to me. It's really, really fun hanging out with you guys um, for the, you know, the few times I did go. Um, but yeah, overall, really, really good stuff. I apologize if Ricky Rush does terrorize your meta. That's that's on me. Uh, my bad. 
So thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions or anything uh, like that, uh, please drop it in the comments below. If you want to discuss why Rookie Rush is not good for the game or how it goes against the spirit of the game, I'm more than open to talk about it, right? But I'm a very adamant believer that Rookie Rush is in fact good for the game. So thanks for watching, you guys, and uh, take it easy. You know, like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff. Thanks.